Well, a lot of people are using the Lakeshore West Line to go to Niagara region to catch the total solar eclipse. And the countdown uh, to the eclipse has reached a fever pitch across North America. Uh, there are many different ways to catch a glimpse of Monday's event. And one way to safely watch it, keyword safely, is through a pinhole projector. To help explain how you can actually make one of these at home, we're joined by Victor Abraham, Director of Outreach and Observatory Curator at the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. Thanks for joining us here live on CB24. Um, you know, this is something that I watched maybe as a kid, uh, watching Sesame Street and learning how to do this. I have since forgot. I don't know where else to get the glasses. My kid got one for free at a parade, uh, but I have none for myself. So what am I to do to, to, to watch this uh, historical celestial event safely? Uh, excellent, uh, excellent to be on here today. Thanks so much. Yeah. And uh, yeah, very important to uh, observe the eclipse safely. Uh, one of the great ways to do it, as you said, is with glasses, if you can get your hands on some. There's several places that still uh, have some. Uh, I know that the Toronto Royal Astronomical Society of Canada has some, uh, and they'll be giving them out. And uh, make sure that uh, when you do uh, put them on, they always go on the outside of whatever optics you have. I did a very quick experiment today, and uh, I went outside uh, to show... Uh, what would happen if you put them in f uh, behind the binoculars? So I'm going to hold this up to the camera, and hopefully you can see. There's mm. a little hole in there. Very dangerous. Uh, and you mentioned the projector. Uh, so I've got one made here already. And uh, essentially, it's just a cereal box that you cut two holes in the front, about the same size on either side. And you put a piece of tin foil over it, a little hole in there. And then that lets the sunlight in projects onto the back and then you can view it so really the sun is going to be behind you mm. and you'll be able to see the projection of the sun and you'll be able to see the eclipse uh, as the moon moves over the surface of the uh, the sun okay so you you put your back to the sun and you let this yes. and you let the sunlight do the work that's right so the sun would come in this way uh hit the back of the box and then back out to your eye through the big hole. And so people who have the glasses, is that similar to what they would see? They would just see a, a basically a just a dot? Is that basically what they're seeing as well? And, then, and they'll slowly see the moon cover the sun itself? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so the pinhole is going to be a very small projection. Uh, it'll be fuzzy depending on how far away the back of that box is. Uh, very hard to focus it because you can't move the back of the box. Uh, whereas if you put the glasses up to your eyes, if you've got 20-20 vision, then you'll see a nice crisp uh, image of the sun and you'll see the moon slowly moving uh, in front of it over the course of two and a half hours. Hmm. Does it have to be a pinhole? Like what if I just use like a pen? Is there a reason why it's a pinhole? Just to maybe get a, a larger uh, image? Well, yeah, well, I guess without getting too technical, uh, the smaller the image, um, the less detail you're going to see. Uh, if you've ever, uh, or if anyone's ever built a, what's called a camera obscura, it's got a slightly bigger hole, but you could theoretically darken your whole room, put a little pinhole on the window, and it will project an image of what is outside on the wall on the opposite side of the room. So bigger the hole, the uh, better the detail you will be able to see. And that holds true with, you know, astronomy equipment as well. Uh, the bigger the aperture of the telescope, the bigger the scope, uh, the more detail you're going to be able to pick up. Awesome. Okay. And now uh, you're the expert. I am not. I am just wondering. Uh, this probably seems completely ridiculous. Why is looking at it so dangerous? What could it do? It, it's not any more dangerous than any other day. Uh, I think instinctively humans, we, we know not to look at the sun on a normal day. Uh, the eclipse is no different. Uh, I guess the perception is that because the moon is moving in front of the sun, there's somehow less light. Uh, it's not as bright. And so we're more apt to look at it for longer. Uh, mm -hmm. Our eyes don't have uh, pain receptors. They don't sense infrared and they don't sense UV light. So by the time you know something's wrong, it's too late, which is why you need to have protection in front of your eye. Okay, so even if there wasn't eclipse, like right now, if I wanted to look up at the sun, I probably shouldn't do that anyways. But if, uh, I guess you'd wear these glasses if you're going to look at yeah, it. Yeah, go, go practice with your glasses. I've been encouraging everyone, you know, it's a nice sunny day today here in Hamilton. Uh, go outside, try your glasses on, see what you're going to see the day of. 
If you're lucky enough, uh, I haven't actually looked at the sun today with a telescope or anything, but if there are sunspots uh, and they're big enough, you should be able to see them just, uh, we'll say naked eye, but mm -hmm. with the glasses in front of your eyes. For sure. Okay, and real quick, you, uh, Victor, you are in Hamilton. Is that where? Where is that in the totality of the coverage? Is is it close to one hundred percent? It's it it is hundred mm -hmm. percent. Um, but depending on how far south you go in Hamilton, and as close as you go to the lake uh, on the other end, uh, you get almost three minutes. Uh, in Hamilton, I think we're at about two minutes and five seconds, where we're running an event uh, at Lime Ridge Mall. Mm. Uh, and so we'll be there from nine till five thirty, uh, and we'll we'll host uh, some events and things like that. But uh, at that location, we're about two minutes. All right. So I guess for anyone who wants to go to Niagara, might not make it because of the traffic jam, go to Lime Ridge Mall on the mountain. A lot of places to eat as well. Uh, All One right. other piece of advice, yes. if I can, yes. uh, and that is if you're traveling, uh, pack sunscreen, a hat, food, water, a chair, your glasses. A telescope if you've got one with a solar filter. If you get stuck somewhere, you don't have to be anywhere particular to look at the sun. You can just look up, but if you're prepared, it'll be a much more enjoyable experience. And we know that historically in this area, we get 60 to 70 percent cloud coverage. We're, our fingers are crossed that we're going to have great weather, but uh, who knows? So the best thing you can do for yourself is be mobile, be willing to move. All right. I dig it. Maybe bike and just pull over. But yeah. That's what I'm Great about. idea. Why not? Okay, uh, Victor Abraham, Director of Outreach and Observatory Curator at the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. Thanks so much. It was, it was fun. Thank, Thank you. you.